Good morning. Welcome to another Feel Good Fry Friday. And uh, this is some kind of uh, stimulation for the weekend and the week ahead to see if we can kind of help you change your business just a little bit. In today's uh, session, we continue the 13 steps to make your photography business work. And we're looking at uh, week two, which is shift your negative feelings about your business into more positive actions. And uh, in this short kind of uh, Feel Good Fry Friday, we're looking to focus in on, on kind of how we can change things and change a little bit of the mindset of you and the business as well. Unfortunately, uh, when we start to um, look at this kind of element, we've got to kind of try and identify what is wrong within the business. Um, however, I would kind of try and encourage you to set up a kind of a column uh, or even two columns, which is the kind of the pros and the cons, what's good about the business, what's bad about the business and so on. But really what we're trying to identify at this stage is what's wrong with the, biz the business and how do I change what's wrong? I know you must feel at times when I kind of talk about these things that you go, it's okay for you, you know, you've been around the industry for such a long time and so on. Uh, I promise you there's no business, uh, including myself, that hasn't had to look at their business and go, okay, we need to change some things here, you know, but what do we need to change? There's very few times we need to kind of completely reset um, the, business, the business. In fact, next week we talk about that. Um, but what we really just need to identify to begin with is, is what is wrong and, and, and how do I change it today or tomorrow instead of just allowing it to be wrong for a long time. Um, I, I think the world, uh, sorry, the word inertia uh, in business is something that needs to be adopted very early on. And the reason being on that is that if you stand still for too long, um, basically the business goes backwards. Uh, and even more so when you're feeling in your heart and your head that the business needs a bit of a kind of a, a, a re kind of kickstart and a jolt and things really. So um, let's look at ways that we can look at and, and kind of things that you're wor worrying, worrying about perhaps. So perhaps people at present are not spending as much money as you need them to or you want, or you want them to. Um, with that in mind, uh, we've got to reverse engineer it. Um, the first thing we've got to look at is have we changed our client by mistake in marketing or has a different kind of client begun to slip through our door without um, any form of filtration? Um, if I wasn't charging a booking fee or a refundable booking fee when a client books me, um, then I'm pretty much allowing the floodgates to open anyway. And perhaps you've just removed something from your automated process that when they go to book in for a se session, they're not basically having to pay anything with the likes of a credit card. Just having a credit card alone and being able to spend 20, 25 pound on a booking fee could basically fill, filter out the clients enough to help minimize the clients who are not going to spend. When I talk about people don't spend. I'm talking anything below about a hundred pounds because really below a hundred pounds spend in, you're not going to earn any money. Even if it's, you know, you think that, you know, 25 quid for your photographs or some digitals or a print or whatever it is going to be a rescue. It's technically not. We're losing money every time in the professional world that a client is really sped in probably below 200, 300 pounds. Um, however, you know, if we kind of put a benchmark in that 100 with it. So why are people not spending money? Have we introduced a new price list? Um, if so, it might not be the price list that's at fault. It might actually be the way that you're referring to things in the price list. You might have made some silly little errors. You might have put something on there to help the kind of the 20% of clients who don't spend money, perhaps try and spend money. And by adding something low value onto a price list, that alone can basically divert the client's gaze and get them just to spend the pure minimum with yourself and so on. So has the price list changed in, in the way that we're looking at it or what we've adapted it to and so on? Are we actually owning up to our prices? Um, I encourage all photographers to talk through the basics of the price list with their clients once they finish the session, uh, what I refer to as the post-session pre-selling or the PSPS. And the reason that I do this is to ensure that I'm talking out loud a price 
not about every single product, but at least the main products that we want to think about, including something very expensive. So when we get to products that are kind of middle of the road, they sound a lot cheaper. So again, it's always good to start off with a high price and then allow the client to take a breath when they get in towards the middle. So if people uh, don't spend money with, with you at present, um, and we've kind of conquered the price list and we've conquered the PSPS. We've then got to kind of divert our gaze into the quality of the photography, the quality of the experience and, and how are they kind of being managed by the client. Now, um, I talk about um, baby ugly. Um, you know, I'm a fa father of two sons. I'm lucky because of my good looks. <laughs> they have my good looks. And I have five grand uh, grandsons. And of course, they all have my genes. But, you know, no matter what, I would always say that my kids and my grandkids were beautiful. And that's the same as our business. And, and really, we never really want to think about our business being ugly by any chance. But when we start to look at our photography, we can get a little bit of protectiveness to it. One of the best things that I ever did in uh, my world of photography was in the early days to kind of ensure that I entered any chance of feedback, photo critiques, competitions, lo local, whether they were camera, camera club or professional. And one of the benefits in doing that, you're getting feedback about your photography. And if you don't get pretentious or, you know, you don't, get worried about somebody calling it ug ugly as such, then you can really pick up things and you can really change. And one of the things I really strive for in my career was to make sure that I wasn't just as good as the photographer down the road, but I, want, I wanted to be the best photographer that I could be. And to move that inertia of quality, I needed to ensure that in every single session that I was getting a little bit more advent adventurous and not kind of playing safe all the time. So perhaps your photography is just a little bit safe and it's been safe for too long. In that way, we really want to then uh, focus in on how we can kind of change. And you can do that this morning. You can basically change today. That's the great thing about being a photographer. If you've got clients coming through your door, there is absolutely no excuses in you not being a better photographer today than you were yesterday. And I would concentrate on that. So think about those things about how we can kind of encourage the client avatar to be focused in on what they need to be focused in on, on the price list, and as well as our photography is exceptional and they're really loving what they see. Most clients join my experience group, most, most photographers join my experience group because they're just not getting enough clients through the door. Um, this can be in several ways. Um, they haven't been going long enough. They've almost become invisible. Perhaps they've moved from a business premises to home premises. Um, perhaps their uh, photography is a little bit kind of niche. Um, perhaps they just don't know how to market full stop with it and things really. And many photographers join the experience group um, for that kind of little magic dust, as it were. However, there is no fair, their fairy dust, I can promise you, in business. We need to market and we need to market hard every single day of the week, every week of the year. So even if you're going on holiday, you still need to actually be promoting your business whilst you're away. And you should be able to have the opportunity to make bookings whilst you're away without dealing with you. So if you run the business alone, if it's all about you, don't kind of create a problem from that. We can really create systems that will allow you to basically promote for up to six weeks ahead or even more. You can actually have a diary that is live today that even while you sleep, a client can make that book in. And I find that so many photography businesses that have been around for say 10, 15, 20 years, um, are basically a little bit more old school than they should be. Um, I've always believed in operating a business like I'm a big biz business. And by doing that, we need to have systems in place that the client um, experience can kind of travel through us. What I refer to as the journey, uh, the journey 
they can travel through us uh, in the easiest way for them, not for me. So every time I put a human member of my team in the way of a client, how will that affect the, cu uh, the customer journey as such? So if I was running an advert on Facebook and somebody sees it and it's a, new, a newborn kind of uh, client or maternity client, and they're sat home at nine o'clock at night because they can't sleep or they don't watch television anymore, whatever it is. And they're scrolling through their phone on Facebook or Instagram, or whatever it is. And they get to an image that they go, wow, this is me. I love this. And there's an offer there that attracts them in. They're going to actually click through to a landing page and they're going to actually look, is it worthwhile me taking up on this offer? Well, if they do take you up on that offer, whether it's entering a competition or purchasing a, a special session, um, at that stage, are you given the opportunity to make that booking online immediate, immediately? If you're not, that is your task of the week, is to find a, a way that you can basically make sure that a client can book um, without a human being involved at all with it and things really. So market more, market consistently, make sure that your avatar is really the type of avatar that you want and make sure that they can book while you're asleep. <coughs> um, not enough time, uh, we all suffer from this. It's it's number three on my five list, as it were. However, it could be number one every single list I create. Um, for for myself, uh, the, one of the things that I really kind of adopted in was the eighth day. Um, I I met a great photographer early on in my career, and we were chatting away in the bar, and uh, we were chatting away, and and he was just working from a home studio. Uh, converted his lounge or whatever it was, but he'd been doing it for a very long, long time. So this is uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, and basically, um, we were, chat we were chatting away and we, we got on to biz uh, business and time and everything else with it. And he said, well, why don't you adopt the eighth day? I went, what do you mean by the eighth day? Now, at this stage, um, Sundays were not a business opening day at all. OK, so we couldn't we weren't allowed to op open with business practices in the U uh, the UK. Um, but he said, why why don't you adopt the eighth day? And he said, the eighth day doesn't take any more family time away. And, and at this point, of course, I'm pricking up my ears because my wife is nagging me that I never see the kids. I'm never at home. And, and even though Debbie was running the business with me, um, she needed to leave at three o'clock to go pick up the kids from school and so on. Anyway, you know, not enough time. And he said, why don't you just do that? And I said, well, what's the eighth day then? He said, just start an hour before you usually do. And it was like the biggest light bulb moment for me that could have ever gone in my life. Now, I'm one of those weirdos that kind of is up at half four to five each day, no matter what. And I take the dog for a walk and I'd feed the kids and everything else with it. But just this revelation of saying, right, OK, don't go into work for, you know, half past eight, go into work for half past seven. And in that time at half past seven, then basically focus in on nothing but the tasks that you need to complete. And this followed me through pretty much all of my studio, uh, my studio years when we opened our own lab uh, in 95 uh, as well within our business premises. Um, I soon kind of went to work about seven o'clock in the morning and I would basically do an hour's worth of print of printing uh, or at least half an hour, I would say. Uh, of printing before any of the team had co uh, come in. So before John, our lab manager, was kind of in in work, I print I printed out most of the kind of the machine element, the automated. Now because my background was in photo lab anyway, from my er early years out of school when I went to work for business photographic services, printing was something e easy for me in color and so on. Um, but what it did, it not only uh, freed up John and he was ready to jump straight into work as soon as he arrived, but it also gave me a chance to uh, catch up for them.
So if there were some issues or they were having a backlog because of in the summer months, not only did uh, did we have a, a drastic increase in our weddings, but we had drastic increase in portraiture as well and things really. It just allowed us never to kind of fall behind the ball. Plus one of my passions was black and white. So uh, I used to print the, the majority of black and white photography and things really. So when I needed to bury myself in, in fun time, um, I used the eighth day, in other words, that extra hour per day to kind of uh, create some real space for me and the business itself. So think about using that kind of idea. I, I kind of encourage all um, photographers, and, and I don't know why, but it seems seems to be so many fee, uh, female photographers running business the businesses that with jug juggling the kids and juggling the family and juggling the, the house and juggling the business with it they seem to be doing their business especially when they're working from home very late into the night and and that can be exhausting by itself so just kind of really time manage as best as you can premises don't allow me to grow this this is quite a classic in fact um in 95, our nine year lease uh, was coming to an end and I had to find us new premises and I found us new premises. Um, we uh, moved into those premises. We moved into a small part of those premises to begin with. But within two or three um, months, if not quicker than that, in fact, we identified that we needed more space now. So we took on the, the rest of the, build, of the building uh, as, as, as well. Um, and so when you're looking at premises, the first thing is don't be afraid to start somewhere um, and move upward um, within a short period of time. I feel that nine years was way too long, but in those good old days, you had to take on a nine year lease and that was it. And you were responsible for the lease up until the nine year with three monthly, uh, sorry, three year, uh, you know, up, up, upwardly increases in rates and so on. But as far as your um, premises concerned, don't fear the move. Um, we moved uh, three times uh, during our studio career and I've moved another three times since and I've never feared it because once you do it once you realize what you actually do is you organize the business ready for the move and then you basically change things that word iner inertia again you, you adapt it into your business so by the time you move to the next premises even though it can feel a bit of a hassle factor what you're, act, uh, you're actually doing is redesigning the business from the ground up when you move as well. So um, don't don't be afraid of the move and things. And then the last but no means least is obviously costs. You know, at this time with the cost of living on everybody's lip, uh, lips in 2022 and f about to hit the fourth quarter, quarter as such, we've seen, you know, uh, uh, heat and light kind of jump in prices that we can't even imagine from 12 months ago as such and what's worse within business premises you can't fix uh, kind of your rates re uh, really you can take on a, con a contract for an amount of time um, but as far as uh, your costs for heat and light is concerned uh, there, there's no real way to do it so all we've really got to do then if that is out of our control uh, this is where we go back to controlling the controllables. So in other words, what we can't control is out of our control. We just need to have, if possible, a little bit of control of that. This is what a lot of kind of high-end athletes do. Um, as far as kind of products, we do have the control on what we're selling and what we're buying it for. So perhaps we need to find different suppliers so we can save money. You know, one of the things with the experience group is that we get great dis uh, discounts from our preferred suppliers and by doing that and a reward to us for spending money with them is that they give us a very keen price so that we can basically uh, control the lost profit from product. They're keen of course because we're selling more products for the wall and for the albums and so on with it. Things like rent, um, you should be prepared to speak to your, la uh, your landlord. Uh, many have over the past two years because of the COVID lock lockdowns and kind of re renegotiate rents. Um, uh, rates, as far as uh, councils are concerned, they've been pretty good to business premise owners over the past two years in, lock in lockdowns. Unfortunately, 2022, 2023, you're pretty much back to full rates. And I know that's going to hurt. But realistically, if you're worried about the cost of increases because of um, 
the likes of um, the cost of living changes that's going on, you probably just need to add in a, an extra few clients per week into your, uh, biz your business to help prop that business up more. So that goes back up to you know, not enough clients. We need to increase those clients uh, no matter what. And then things like salaries and kind of um, everything else related to the, biz uh, the business, um, we've got to kind of watch it. You obviously cannot really afford to decrease your salary at pre present because of obviously the cost of living changes at home. Um, however, what you really need to do is make sure that you are looking at the profits within the business. So for me this week, what I feel that you should be concentrating on is a little bit of everything there but the first thing to do is not enough time introduce the eighth day immediately and then from that you'll be able to apply most of everything that we're seeing here even if you spent the one hour per per day from monday with that eight hour uh, eight day as it were um, and you can use that hour to actually look at how you can change this and even if you're using the extra hour that you gain each day to concentrate every single week on one of these things, you'll probably find that your business has made a drastic difference. So thanks for joining me today on trying to shift your negative feelings about your business into more positive actions. Next week, we're gonna be looking at preparing to fail and you will fail, prepare to avoid failure and you should avoid failure.